What is going on guys and welcome to the video. Today we're running into something that I said I wanted to do from the very beginning, from my very first video, and that is talking about building a brand and starting your own brand. I have kind of got plans to start my own brand and I feel like it's good to kind of document that. Not only so I can learn what to do right and what to do wrong, but also so you can learn what to do right and what to do wrong. So everything I do right, I'll be like, oh, I've done that amazing. Everything I do wrong, I do wrong. Just means that you will learn a lot better and learn a lot quicker and just means that you don't make the mistakes that I will. So today we're looking at the starting of the brand and the pre-production. So that includes the name, the influences, the design, and then the blank slash pre-production stage. So let's get into the video and the first section is name. So when it comes to name, a lot of people tend to go for a lot of different types of names. People like to say, think of like a brand and then like a brand name and then add like clothing, studio, or something of that nature on the end. To me, when I think of like a studio, I think of people that are gonna do very nice basics. I think of Acne Studio straight away. So very nice basics, like a lot of cut and sew, general pieces that are gonna be very high quality. So if you're going to do that with your brand, I recommend using, using the lights of studios. Again, if you're doing a skateboard brand, always do skateboards at the end, it just works. It just instantly know that it's a skateboard brand. If you're doing denim, put denim at the end. If you're doing everything in general, a lot of people like to put clothing. I'm not a huge fan of that. For me, it just reminds me of a lot of very basic pieces and just a very basic brand in general. And I just don't think that's quite good for a startup brand. It just doesn't give the right impression straight away. A lot of people like one word names. So obviously with the big people like Supreme Palace and Bape, everyone thinks, oh, let's think of a one word name. Although I kind of disagree with it, it's very, very effective. I've had so many brand names that I've just written down and crossed out that were one word names just because I don't eventually didn't like the like style of the one word. I originally wanted to start my brand with my friend and we ended up calling it Felix Air Pierre. Felix from my name and Pierre from his middle name. That didn't work out in the end and I'm definitely gonna bring him back in at some point. I really want to because He's a creative powerhouse and I need him on there. However, now I've changed my name and a lot of people do just use their normal name. You can literally name any designer and they're pretty much named after people. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Dior, Margiela. Every brand is named after its founder. Of course, you can get very creative with the names and I have got a friend of mine that started a brand. Originally, it was called Fue Gang, but it's now developed into Hellboy. To be honest, to me, I prefer Hellboy. It just sounds a lot better and just works a lot better, if you know what I mean. But when thinking of your name, have your concept in mind. Know what you want to create and develop it from there. For for example, if you're gonna call your brand something like Rebel Clothing, you don't wanna be making making very nice cut and sew pieces, it just doesn't match the name of it. When you think of Rebel, you think of Rebellious, you think of Grunge and Grime, and you think of that sort of aesthetic, and that's sort of what you want to go for if you're going your name called Rebel. Also, if you're gonna have your name to do with flowers, you're gonna think of bright, colorful pieces, rather than dark and dingy pieces. So you've kind of gotta have your name attached to the designs and the brand that you want to create and the concept that you want to have. So now I'm going to look into the influences and how that will affect your brand. When it comes to influences, you want to think deep. You want to know what your brand is going to be about. Find a style that you like. For example, my friend who used Hellboy, he's very influenced by black Norwegian metal and just the death metal in general. So he's got very dark designs and it's all heavily influenced by that. Colors like black and red are heavily prominent throughout his designs and I'll show you a few pieces in a minute. Obviously with Goldfang and Tyler, he always had design clothes that he wanted, but colors were always prominent throughout. And as you can see in his most recent collection, they're heavily inspired by flowers, as are his music. So you kind of got to interlink a few things that you like and in let them inspire you. So for me, my first collection is going to be heavily inspired by La Haine. La Haine is a French film directed by Matthew Katowicz that kind of takes place in the suburbs of Paris and then moves into Paris, following the life of three different individuals. All these three individuals are kind of minorities in the French society. One of them has a gun and one of their friends is in police custody about to die. It kind of follows their story throughout a day and Kasovitz says that the ending was the main thing that he came up with and the entire story then was just building up to the ending. I had the chance to visit Paris in December and that kind of really pushed me into my influence and seeing the city was incredible because La Haine is my favorite film and I saw the city in the same way that La Haine portrayed traded to me. So walking around, my mind was being blown. I kind of like had this negative op opinion on police, which is crazy because that's what the film kind of gives you. And the back streets and the art seemed so beautiful to me because the city had been portrayed in that way throughout La Haine. So for my collection, I've obviously taken a lot of influence from that and my designs have been inspired by the pieces that I've done there. Again, my, my collection has been heavily inspired by Ronning and how he does three different capsule collections every year and they're inspired by a different thing. That's what I kind of want to do and I think that works really well. And I know a lot of people do have brands based on the inspiration, but I like the idea of concepts because it just works so well. So now I'm going to get on to designing. What should influence you and how you should design things and what software you should use. 
So as for designs, I think it's very important to be original. You can have great designs, but if you're copying everyone else, it's boring. No one's gonna to wanna to buy your product. When designing things, you have gotta take in mind your influences and how that's going to affect your designs. You've also gotta think, what are your audience going to want? If you know what they want, then you know exactly what you're going to produce. Also have in mind, at the end of the day, it's your brand and you're going to endorse it. So design something that you want to wear. That's the most important thing. If you would wear it, design it. Take your time and make everything is right. Use apps like Photoshop and Illustrator to design pieces. Illustrator would be prominently used for graphics, especially on tees and hoodies. You can also do like basic layouts for different pieces of clothing like trousers and jackets on there. And then for example, if you have got a graphic, you can then put that into Photoshop and place it on a t-shirt and composite it onto the image so you know what it's going to look like in production. It's kind of a good idea and it's always useful to have that in mind so you know what it's going to look like in the future. This also means that you can kind of create a marketing strategy and sort of like promotion work through that so you know what you're gonna have in mind in the future and you can start thinking about it now. I'm going to reiterate this again. Take your time and make sure everything is perfect. If you haven't got a perfect product that you're not happy with, then there's no point doing it. Take your time, make sure it's right. Because if it's not right, no one's gonna want it. This is where blanks come in. And I guess I'll talk about this now. So, when it comes to finding blanks, it's good to look everywhere. You can literally type online screen printing and a whole bunch of local places where you live will come up, as well as a few big names nationwide. You have two options for this. You can either go for your local one, which will tend to be a little bit more expensive, or you can go for a bigger brand, which means it will be cheaper and the turnaround will be quicker. However, it doesn't mean that you'll have a bit more of an insight on the actual production. With your local manufacturer, you might be able to go there, get a few pieces made, and see the production actually going on. It means you can make sure everything's right, and you're right there, so you know everything's gonna be perfect. If you are looking to order from big companies, I would suggest trying to get a sample made. A lot of places don't offer this, however one website, close to order, let you print one garment with a design on it. You can do a custom piece and then they'll print it out and send it to you. It's just a good way to kind of have like a sample piece so you know what it's going to look like. Also, when it comes to blanks, you must know exactly what you want. If you want a heavyweight t-shirt, go and find one. If you want a lightweight t-shirt, go and find one. But please do not just find the cheapest t-shirt and print on it. Make sure you order a few in and you know exactly what blank you're gonna use. For me personally, I wanna print, print on a heavier product. I wanna have a heavier garment. Because for me, it feels like better quality, so why not go for the heavier garment when you're gonna get a bit more for your money and the graphic actually ends up sticking to heavier garments a little bit better. And if you're charging X amount for a t-shirt, you want the customer to feel the same way that you are going to if you get the t-shirt. If you see it's thin, you're not gonna really wanna pay 20 quid for it whereas if it's a nice thick heavyweight t-shirt you're going to be happy spending 20 pounds on it but again take your time try out a whole bunch of places don't be afraid to spend money you're going to spend a lot of money on this because you're going to have to try different things and see how it looks if you don't like it just try again and get a different sample just make sure that everything is perfect i will keep saying this you have to make sure everything is perfect before you order that's when the problem occurs if it's not perfect and you get a 25 batch in and they're all terrible and you've wasted 200 pounds. It's just not worth it, just make sure it's perfect. And remember, don't just go for cheap, it's always good to have a very good product. Just a few more words from me just before I end the video. I just wanna make this like a more explanatory video and a bit of fun, I don't know. I guess when you're making your own clothing brand, you've gotta have fun, that's the main thing. Just make sure that you set yourself a target and meet it. I've set my date for the 31st of May, 2018, so I'm definitely gonna reach that. I'm kind of in the production stage, I just wanna get there. Once I'm there, I'll be so happy and I'll update you with this. Just remember to bounce ideas off creative people. Surround yourself with creative people. These are all the people here that I literally just send messages to saying, oh, do you like this? Oh, what blank did you use? Oh, I really like your designs, da, da, da. Just talk to people and get their opinion and work with people. That's what you want to do. It's, it's fun to work with people. Just get creative and enjoy yourself. That's all you can do. And it's just fun. Just make sure that you have fun and don't stress about like creating products you shouldn't go into this thing it's going to be full time you should do, go into this thinking oh i want to do something i want to be creative and i want to make a brand just have fun with it guys and thank you so much for watching the next episode of this will be the production phase and i'll kind of talk you through my production phase and what i'm going through when i receive the parcels and then we'll go from there so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video which will be on wednesday see you later guys